Hi friends, I'm Maz Aftab from Easy Approach and in this video we are going to talk about HTTP POST request. So first of all let's quickly understand what is POST request. I hope you know that our applications work on client server model. We store all the data on the server over the internet and the client which is our Flutter application sent request using HTTP for either getting the data from the server or to generate a new data on the server. Now in the post request, usually we send some data in the body of it to the server. And in response, the server takes some necessary actions accordingly. Like we may send the information of user email and password to register the user on the server. And in return, the server would create the user and it would also send the acknowledgement to the client. So in this video, we are going to use dummy API to make post requests. So here's the website that we are going to use for for use for making the HTTP calls. So it is actually request response.in. So it's actually the short of request and response. And over here, they provide a lot of dummy APIs for learning purpose. So we, we are going to use this one, which is uh, create user. And you can see over here at the left hand side, these are the tags that's actually indicating some of them are post requests and some of them are get requests. But in this video, for now, we are more interested in learning post requests, how to make a post request. So that is why we are going to use this create API. This create request is actually for creating the user on the server. So you can see over here in the request, we got to send the name of the user and the job title of the user. And in the return, the server would create the user and it would also send the acknowledgement as a response. And you can see this would be the response when we will send this information or this request. So what you have to send in the body of this create post request, so it's actually you have to send this data. And this is actually normally mentioned on the documentation of the API that you are using. So it, it tells us what you have to send in the body of the post request while making the request. Now, anyways, so we are going to use HTTP package for, for making the HTTP call on Flutter. So this is the package you can search on pop.dev and for installing this, you can just paste it inside the pubspec.yaml file offered after the Cupertino icons. And you can just uh, click on packages get this would install the package and then we can good to make the HTTP call. Now what I'm doing because we got to send the user email and the job title in the body of HTTP request. So I'm going to make two text field in the application. So first of all, let's uh, get rid of all this code. Okay, so we, we got to remove this uh, increment counter and this this thing. And inside it, or oh, we can just remove the body. And here I'm going to make a container. With some padding. I should have done this before and let's have uh, 32 pixels of uh, padding and in the child I'm making a column widget and let's remove this uh, increment counter and inside the column widget I'm gonna make two text fields And let's make two text editing controllers. One for name and the second one is for job. And let's associate these controllers inside the text fields. Okay, so let's refresh this screen. Okay, so you can see over here two text fields. Now we'll call the API inside when the user would tap on this floating action button. And now let's uh, write the code for making the API. So for calling the API, what I'm doing, I'm making a future. 
and the return type of the future will be the user model so we gotta make the user model for for this response so let's go on your application code and let's make the user model file so what i'm doing i'm going in the project and inside the lib i'm gonna create a new file and that would be user underscore model so now we have to make the we have to make the complete user model clause uh, for this for this response so it would have all the uh, all the fields like name job id created at but the good news is that i actually found a tool that makes the model clause against the http response so you gotta just paste over there this response and that would generate the model clause for the for this response so this is the website that we are going to use app.quicktype.io and you have to select over uh, over here you have to select json as a source type and over here in the language you have to select dart and what you have to do you just have to copy this response and you just have to paste over here and you just have to give here the name as well user model So that's all what you have to do. You can see over here the generated code for the model class. You can just copy and paste in and use in the application. So that's the beauty and the magic of this application, of this website, that it generates all the code against your HTTP response. And I've been using this uh, tool in two application and it saved a lot of time because uh, before this application, I had to write a lot of code for the model classes. So I had to give almost uh, almost 30% of the development time in making the model classes. So now I can just paste the response and I can just get the code of it. And usually the HTTP response is not like based on just four fields. It may be possible that in the response we would have hundreds of fields. So in that case, this tool works perfectly. And I've been using this tool and I've tested it many times that works 100%. So let's copy all the code and paste it inside the user model clause and inside it you can see it provide us uh, two methods the first one is user model from json so if we have the json of user then we can convert it into a user model and likewise we have a method that is user model to json so if we have a user model so we can convert it into json string so anyways let's go back to the future that we were making because we have done with the user model and over here we have to define user model because uh, this future will be returning us the user model that actually the created user and let's give some name like create user because that will be creating the user on the server okay first we have to we have to we have to import this file and now let's make the future and because we will be using the await keyword so we got to use the async and we need to take uh, inside the parameter we need to take take the user and the job title because that we will be sending in the request okay so first of all we have to define the url or the api link So it should be the base URL is th is this, and then inside it we we for this uh, request we gotta use slash API slash users. So let's copy this, and in the base you gotta paste this, and after this we have uh, API. Okay, API slash users. So that's the URL for calling the API. So now let's make the HTTP call. So first of all, you gotta use HTTP with the alias that we have given. And inside it, we have post. So first of all, you have to define here the API URL. And then you have to define the body. And inside the body, you gotta send the information that's essential in order to make the API work. So you can see again, in the API request, we, we got to send this uh, object. So we can just copy this. 
Oh, it actually has the name and we have uh, given the email. Okay, so let's uh, make this name. Okay, so we can now just paste this thing and we can just change the values. Over here, we can give the user given name and here we have to give the job title. And because we have to, we have to save the response as well. So what I'm doing, I'm making a variable response and as this is a future http.post so we have to use a wait keyword and now we have to verify if this api worked or not for verifying it we gotta compare the response code so what we have to do we have to first check the ideal response code on the documentation of api so here it is it is written that the response code should be this 201 so we can just use this so let's compare so we have to write a response dot response code. Oh, it's actually a status code. And we can compare it with 201. And if that works successfully, what we can do, firstly, we can get the response string. That's actually inside response dot body. And now we can return the user model. So you have to write return. And inside it, we have a user model from JSON. So we have to call this. So you can call it user model from JSON. And inside it, you have to give the string, response a string. So you can just paste this. So that's all what you have to do. And in the else, when it uh, doesn't work, so what we have to do, we can just return null. And now let's call this future inside the on press of floating action button. So firstly, what I'm I'm doing, I'm firstly getting the name from the text controller. And same with the job title, but with the job controller. And now we have to call the future. So the future is actually for the name create user and it will return the user model so firstly we have to make a final user model because that's what will be returning by the future and let's give some name like user and now we can call the future that's create user and inside it you have to pass the name and the job title and you can see it's giving some error because this is a future so we got to use a wait and since we are using await, we have to use here async as well. And for the verification, because we have to show some data uh, from this user model on the screen so that we can verify that uh, it's working. So what I'm doing, I'm making a global variable of user model because this cannot be accessible by these text fields or the text uh, which is that I'm going to make. So what I'm doing, I'm going to make a, a global variable of user model and I'm giving it a uh, user. And initially it would be null, but once we get the response from the, uh, from the API here, we can just set a state. And inside it, we can just uh, set the state user to the user that's returned by this uh, future. And now uh, let's make uh, inside the text fields, let's make uh, two or maybe one text widget to show some data on the screen from the user model. So first of all, I'm uh, for making some vertical space, I'm using size box and giving some height like uh, of 32. And after this, I'm making a text widget. But I got to show this text widget only when the user, that's actually the state variable is not null. Because when it is null, then we don't have to show anyone, anything. So we can do if user is null, then show empty container else show this text widget and inside it what we can do we can let's see what we can get from the user so um okay so what i'm doing i'm saying the user with this name is created successfully so i'm gonna print some message is created successfully at time and let's again access the user okay 
and inside it we have date time so we have created it and inside it we can just convert it to a string the user with this name and user with this name and let's print the id as well the user id given by the server id okay so that's great i think now let's restart the application okay so i'm gonna give my name and let's open the console as well so that we can see if there is any error given by anything so i'm writing my name maz off top and in the job title flutter instructor or flutter developer okay so if i tap on it it should show me the data inside it so let's uh, tap on it we have to wait for some time oh that's great so you can see the user mas of oh i have given it a may of top but it's mas of top so the user mas of top 780 that's my id is created successfully at the time this so that's the current time the time that that i use uh, at which i've just uh, created the user so that's it from this video. In this video, we have learned how to how to make post requests in Flutter because uh, that's what uh, has been requested from the from the viewers uh, to make a video on HTTP post. So that's all from this video. If you like the video, please give a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed my channel, please subscribe my channel and support me and share the videos with those who want to learn Flutter with easy approach. So thank you for watching.